Hey, wrestling fans, thank you for joining me for the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. I'm Scott Falder, and just like all my teenage years, I'm doing it alone tonight. JJ couldn't be here this week, but the news is too big to not tell you about it, so I'm doing it alone. But first, let me tell you about JJ. The man is on vacation this week. He is enjoying himself on his super yacht. He's currently sailing somewhere off the coast of Portofino, Italy, or Athens, Greece. I'm not sure which. He's kind of alternating between the two, but he's got this, uh, it's about a 130 meter super yacht, somewhere around, you know, $10 billion for this thing, something like that, crew of about 100. So he's having a good time, but he's not here tonight, and it's up to me, so so bear with me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm the sidekick. But I'm, I'm going to do the best job I can. But there is so much to go over. And I, I want to I start out, first of all, with Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon has officially retired from the WWE. He is no longer a part of the WWE. He's gone. He has ridden that wrestling ring into the sunset, never to be seen again. We will see. But part of the reason for this could be, just maybe, be the fact that on Monday, the WWE Board of Directors announced, due to their internal investigations, there were $14.6 million dollars Paid two people for their NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, beginning in 2006 through the current fiscal quarter. So that is not good news. If it was out of his pocket, that's one thing. But when you're using WWE money, that's another. So because of this, the board of directors have instructed their accounting firm to reissue, restate their profit and losses per quarter beginning in 2019 all the way up to the most recent quarter, which is the first quarter of 2022. Now, this this could be bad news for Vince because, as you know, WWE is a publicly traded company. That means he has the Securities and Exchange Commission that he has to answer to. And by misreporting, misstating, or just forgetting about these $14.6 million in payments, that is not going to set well with the SEC. That's all we know right now. We do not know any more. But this is this is huge news. This man retiring, and he has 14.6 million reasons to retire. But with the retirement, we have a shakeup inside of the WWE. Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan have been named by the board of directors, and you're going to hear board of directors a lot because. There is no longer a Vince McMahon at the helm. The board of directors are kind of running the show right now. But Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon, you all know those names, especially Stephanie's. They are co-CEOs of the WWE. They are going to have to work together. Do not know what their relationship is like. They may think each other as best friends. They may not send Christmas cards to each other. We don't know. But they will have to agree moving forward. Now, with that, since Vince was head of creative, we also have a new head of creative for the WWE. And this is going to make a lot of people happy to hear that it is none other than Triple H. 
Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the man himself, the game, is the head of creative. And there are a lot of people in the locker room that are very, very excited about this. They are ecstatic that Triple H is head of creative. He's calling the shots. He's going to be working with the writers to make sure everything goes the way he likes. Because when he was head of NXT, NXT did very well. They had some great storylines. Now you have people who recently left the company due to creative differences that may be able to come back with Vince gone. You have some storylines that are stale, old, no good. They may be gone as well. It may not happen overnight because they will have to gradually change things to the way Triple H wants them to be. But it definitely is going to make a difference down the road. So not only is the locker room happy, but the USA Network is ecstatic. The USA Network cannot wait for Triple H to get his hands wrapped around the creative and see what direction this goes. Especially now that it is TV 14 and no longer PG boring. So the, the sky's the limits on this. So there's, there, there's a lot to grasp for this one. Now, you have to look at the inner circle of Vince and wonder what's going to happen. You have Kevin Dunn, who has always been a Vince McMahon yes, yes person. Kevin Dunn has been gradually selling off some of his WWE stock. Kevin Dunn, from all of the, the dirt sheets, the rumors, the Twitters, you know, things like that. Kevin Dunn and Stephanie McMahon are not best friends by any stretch of the imagination. How much longer do you think Kevin Dunn will be around? Because Kevin Dunn represents the old guard, Vince McMahon, who built the company. We have to thank Vince. Without Vince, we would not have WWE as we know it today. So, so I'm not saying that Vince is a bad person. Vince has done a tremendous amount of good for wrestling. But Kevin Dunn, you know, it could be three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. But I think it will be within the next 12 months. Kevin Dunn will cash out some more WWE stock and live happily ever after. You have to think about Paul Heyman. The man is a creative genius when it comes to wrestling. And I know back in the, the 2000s, Paul Heyman and Stephanie McMahon did not get along that well, did not see eye to eye. But as Paul Heyman has matured, aged, Stephanie has matured, aged, Paul Heyman has settled down a lot, not quite so opinionated, uh, willing to admit he is wrong. Him and Stephanie McMahon are actually good friends right now. They get along famously. So it's possible Paul could work hand in hand with Triple H and create some of the best stories we've seen in since the Attitude Era. So let's hope. Let's hope that Triple H works with Paul Heyman, two tremendously good wrestling minds in creative, setting up the next generation of the WWE. Now, one thing that did happen when Vince McMahon sent out the email uh, before SmackDown Friday night was that Brock Lesnar was upset, to say the least. Brock Lesnar was so upset that he walked out of SmackDown just before the taping began, literally minutes before. Somehow, some way, they were able to calm him down, work out something, because Brock Lesnar is above 
all else. He's a businessman of wrestling, not a wrestling fanatic, not a mark for wrestling. To him, it's a business and a paycheck. They convinced him to come back. He did what he was intended to do with Theory at the end of SmackDown to promote SummerSlam coming up. And there's a lot to be seen yet what's going to happen down the road because Brock loved Vince. And with Vince gone, they're going to have to reconvince Brock of what's going to happen down the road because love him or not, Brock is still a major, major draw for WWE. So time will tell. This is my opinion. And I know a lot of you are going to agree. A lot of you are going to disagree. So if you do disagree or agree, I will remind you, you can send us a note on Twitter and you can tell us, you know what, Scott, you're so full of crap that your eyes are brown and I smell you through the computer. Or you can say, Scott, what you said made a lot of sense, but it might go this way too. Either way, send us a note and you can, you can send us a note on Twitter at Suplex City Pod. Once again, that's at Suplex City Pod on Twitter. And we love hearing from you. Every week we get we get notes, we get you know, love notes, hate notes, we get everything. And we look forward to getting them because it helps us make a better podcast for you, our valued listeners. Up next, I want to talk a little bit about Death Before Dishonor. The Ring of Honor and AEW show this past weekend that started off the very first match out the door was the Ring of Honor world champion Jonathan Gresham wrestling Claudio Castanoli for the title. And as you know, Claudio is a former WWE wrestler. He is now signed with AEW. And already, less than a month into his tenure, is wrestling for the Ring of Honor World Championship. And as you probably know by now, Claudio is the new Ring of Honor Champion of the World, defeating Jonathan Gresham. Now there's a little story behind this. Jonathan Gresham met with Tony Khan prior to the match at death before dishonor. And evidently it was not a good conversation because according to Fightful and Fightful They have good stuff. They have great information. And, you know, it's not like we know everything. We do get information from other sources. But according to Fightful, Gresham met with Khan before the pay-per-view. And he was more heated than usual. And it was regarding the direction of his booking and his character. Now, you would think that this would stay private. But... The details got out because the conversation got pretty loud. It was so loud, in fact, that building security was able to hear their discussion word for word. And there's more than one person said that Gresham cussed out Khan. They did not say, you know, what he said. But they said that he ripped into Khan and he let him have it. Well, from what they they heard, Gresham was frustrated with the creative direction of his character. He did not want to turn heel. He was adamant he was not going to turn heel. And he had a vision for his creative direction, for his character for what he wanted to do down the road. Tony Khan did not share this vision. Tony Khan 
had changes he wanted to make in the character. He wanted to make some creative changes, and Gresham did not agree with them. Now, Gresham had said that he wanted to meet with Khan several days beforehand, but the Khan was unavailable. Tony Khan, as you know, is a busy man. He is creative. He's booking. He's running the company. He's counting the pennies, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. I don't know how he does it. I know I could not. He must work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But he was not able to meet with Jonathan Gresham until just a couple hours prior to the match with Claudio. Gresham did not even know he was going to lose the match until he met with Tony Khan. And it wasn't so much that he was going to lose the match, but it was a creative direction of the character that made him mad. So when Tony Khan said, no, it's going to be this way, and Gresham did not agree with that, Gresham gave him, note, gave him notice, said, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to take time off. I'm going to do what I want. And there is nothing you can do about it. So Tony Khan allowed him his release. And Gresham is no longer with Ring of Honor, which is a subsidiary of AEW. So unfortunately, not everyone is happy, but you cannot run a company where... Everyone is 100% happy. Now, there's one other match I wanted to discuss from Death Before Dishonor. And this was the match that I personally was waiting for. And it was FTR, the champions, against the Briscoe brothers. And I... Oh, man. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Because this was unbelievable. I mean, these guys beat the living hell out of each other. They, they did move after move. They, they had great ring psychology. They, there was blood not only from juicing but also from hard shots and you know they they got busted the hard way and i'll tell you what the next morning i don't know how they could not walk with a limp or have a swollen eye split lip whatever now i do know that dax sent out a tweet the next day Close up of his face. He had one eye that was a little swollen. He had a cut above another eye. And he he did not look the best. But I just, I can't even begin to tell you how awesome this match was. But if you get the chance to watch it, you definitely need to. But now tonight's not going to be as long as our normal podcast, because number one, I am alone. Like I said, JJ is, you know, he's, he's cruising, cruising Greece and Italy in his super yacht. I, I kind of feel a little left out to be honest, but when you've got a hundred and some meter super yacht with a crew of a hundred and all the money in the world, why not? So I'm going to leave you guys here with that tonight. We're not going to have a main event because, as we mentioned last week, our main event was going to be our favorite Attitude Era moment. And I know mine. I know that JJ knows his. We have shared. And they're both amazing. Both of them. You couldn't, you couldn't pick a bad one because there's so many great moments. But that is going to be our main event now for next week is the favorite Attitude Era moment. So with that, this is Scott Falder with the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. 
Don't forget to send us a tweet at Suplex City Pod. Once again, that's at Suplex City Pod. Send us a note. Let us know what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Watch some wrestling. Stay up with the news. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Good night. <laughs>